Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Structural Drafting. Uh, my name is Robert Brister. I know most everybody. There may be a couple I'm not uh, familiar with, but uh, it's good to meet you. And if you need anything, please feel free to contact me uh, in my office, phone, email, all that of course found on the syllabus. Um, I just kind of wanted to introduce you to what we're going to be talking about uh, in this class. Um, it's going to cover all gamuts of what we consider structural drafting from a uh, construction standpoint. Uh, that's where we're going to be attacking this monster. Um, different types of structural drafting that we're going to be uh, discussing. One is just your engineering drawings, which is uh, structural engineer, um, civil engineer, those types of uh, firms. Uh, those are going to be drawings that will be used to complete a project. So if I have a building come in that I need to draw a foundation for, columns, anything like that. That's what we're talking about when we say engineering drawings. Uh, the other type of drawings that we will talk about is shop drawings. Um, they are going to be more detailed drawings of specific pieces of a project. So uh, take the whole overall project and let's say we need to take a specific uh, column and have a really detailed drawing of it because there's a point on it where we're going to have to have some holes to attach some 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 sort of uh, metal plate to then hold something else. Well, that would require a shop drawing showing exactly where that plate's going to be attached, how large the holes are, how far they're located from the top of bottom of the column, how far they're located from the outside edge or the center of the column, those sorts of things. Um, those can be design oriented like that, fabrication, how do we need to produce these things. Uh, from a manufacturing standpoint, what machinery do we need to use in order to get that job done, or even to the point of erection of a steel building, uh, shop drawings to show, okay, this is the order in which we need to do it, kind of like you would find on instructions uh, for a desk or something like that that you would buy uh, and put together yourself. Um, a lot of times you're going to find both of those included in a set of working drawings. You're going to have the engineering drawings, but then the shop drawings included to, to help out the workers. Um, like I said, most of our focus, or not most of, all of our focus is going to be on construction, on buildings. Um, but anything can be considered structural uh, if it just has different parts put together to support something. So a uh, bridge, large uh, structures to support piping systems, uh, roads. Uh, towers, anything like that is considered a structural item, so that would be considered structural drafting. Uh, but anything, that, everything that we're going to be doing is actually going to be uh, building related. Um, so we will approach everything from that standpoint, from concrete to wood to steel to heavy timber. We're going to look at all of those. We're going to have multiple projects that we're going to do, some small, and then of course uh, a larger one towards the end. Um, and then during that larger one, the final project, uh, y'all are probably going to have to uh, collaborate. Uh, online collaboration, if you can meet, that's great, but do it as a group project. More details will be given about that later on. Um, so right now we're going to look at a PowerPoint real quick just to run over some basic things um, and to also kind of introduce you again to a little more of, of the world that we're living in right now as far as structural drafting. Introduction to structural drafting. This is just meant to be a, an overview of the, the office setting, structural engineer, structural drafter, what their responsibilities are, and just some of the things that you'll look for uh, in that office setting when it comes to creating structural plans. Uh, the engineer himself, uh, his job obviously is going to be um, most tedious, I guess is the right way to say it. He is going to be designing the actual structural skeleton itself. By skeleton, we mean the frame, the columns, the beams, uh, the flooring system, roofing system, everything that makes up the bones, if you will, of that building, the, what's holding it up. Um, while exterior walls, interior walls may change, those sorts of things, the skeleton will remain the same. Um, in doing that, he's going to try to maintain the architectural form. And what we mean by that is keeping the look of it, the flow of it. Uh, everything that the architect and the client decided upon during their initial design stages, he's going to try to maintain that, but still obviously uh, create a structural system that will support the building and everything involved in it. That sometimes can be uh, a challenge in itself. 
and doing that he's going to calculate shapes and sizes of materials to support the building loads. Um, loads, we have dead loads and we have live loads. Dead loads are the ones that are part of the building itself. Uh, foundation, structural columns, uh, wood, steel, concrete, uh, anything that's you know part of the actual building. The live load would be movable objects. You, me, desks, chairs, um, you know, anything that can be moved within the building to another room. That's a live load. Snow is a live load. It's not there all the time. It's not part of the building. But in supporting all these loads, if you remember from construction materials, uh, we have different shapes and different sizes, for instance, of, of steel. And so depending on what shape we pick and what loads we have, the sizes may vary. So that's going to determine also how heavy they are and how long they are and those sorts of things. So that's part of the calculation process for the structural engineer. And in all this, you're going to hopefully monitor the cost of the structure versus load. And what we're talking about is what it takes to support that load. Should I support that load with three really large columns or should I support that load with five or six really small columns? You know, it just, it just kind of depends on the design, depends on the cost um, of each of those, how many it takes. All sorts of things can go into the process. And then also in that, we should look at fire resistance. How are we going to maintain a fire resistance rating for the building? Um, that could be spray-on fire coatings. That could be multiple layers of sheetrock, different ways to do it. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to cover our structure uh, to maintain the fire resistance we need, which is all dictated by codes. And then, of course, the structural engineer has to take into account other building systems, mechanical systems, electrical systems, sprinkler systems, all those sorts of things. And are they going to affect the structure or can the structure interfere with those systems? So all that is, is very important and the structural engineer has to take into account those things. The drafter of course is going to be preparing the working drawings and most of the time that's going to be from a sketch. Uh, sketches are very common in engineering uh, so you have to be able to interpret the engineer's sketch obviously plus the handwriting and notes and those sorts of things. Um, but also like we've already spoken about it could be detail or shop drawings. In other words you know special instances, special uh, designs for a specific piece, things like that. Um, so anything that's specialized for a, a particular part may have to also detail that. For the structural drafter, a lot of times you're going to have specific things that uh, are, are traits of a structural drafter. Some of these are general for all drafters, but some are specific. Should be reliable, of course, be able to concentrate, patient, neat, organized. This is some of the general ones. Uh, this one is very important for structural, able to visualize and be creative. You got to be able to visualize these different structural pieces meeting, how they meet, where they meet. Are they going to interfere with something else? Those sorts of things. And then be able to put that, of course, ultimately on paper. And then the other is possess a decent amount of mathematical ability. And that's very important because you will be at some point as a structural drafter expected to uh, be able to perform simple calculations yourself to maybe back check or maybe you think there's a simpler way to do things do the math to figure that out those sorts of things that's a huge help to an engineer if you can do some of those on your own and not have to rely on him to do everything uh, that's a that's a very important thing as well um, as far as the skills basically it's going to come down to this one's a big one understanding building technology and construction the difference is the technology is the processes and the materials that go into the actual building and the construction would be the methods how are they going to do it so staying up to date on current materials uh, processes to produce the materials uh, what materials can go together or go well together um, also different methods that you might find to put together uh, structural items whether it be steel wood concrete any of those things um, also, you want to be able to read all types, and I emphasize that, all types of working drawings, uh, especially architectural, because they're going to be the ones you work most closely with, and they're going to dictate your structure. They're going to dictate where columns go, how high they need to be, how deep the beams need to be, all those sorts of things. Um, 
understanding basic structural analysis and mechanics. What that's really talking about is understanding how things go together, why they go together the way they do. Um, this actually goes up just like you were looking at a building. The footings are on the bottom. They're going to support the columns. Columns are going to support the girders. And then the girders are going to support the beams, which support roofs and floors. Uh, that's the order in which they go. And we have to make sure that the pieces we use in this puzzle are feasible and economical as far as putting the structure together. If not, we can run into some problems. But this in itself is important to understand the structure about how things go together. Uh, if we don't understand the order of things over here from top to bottom, or in this case from bottom to top, uh, then it's not going to translate well into the drawings themselves. Uh, as far as following architecture, we're always going to have to know certain things about the architectural plans uh, before we can make good decisions structurally. Room sizes, corridor widths, uh, location and size of doors, windows, elevators, those sorts of things. What materials are we using? What does the facade look like, the exterior? And of course, what loads are going to be on the building from the materials used. Um, all of those things are very important when you're coming up with the structure, placing the structure, and determining sizes and shapes and all those sorts of things. So obviously you have to know how to read architectural drawings and get information off of them. Generally included in structural plans, uh, foundation plan obviously would be first, the concrete, uh, the pilings, whatever is in the ground supporting this building. We have elevations uh, in structural plans, which just shows the structure from a, a front view, side view, those sorts of elevations, uh, just how the pieces go together. And then, of course, we have sections and details, which are going to zoom in on a particular wall, particular uh, intersection, things like that to show specifically how they go together. Uh, and then schedules will be um, taking a number, say, off of a, a beam, uh, looking at the schedule, finding that number, and then that number will dictate or tell you uh, the size, shape, length, all those sorts of things. So we're going to be getting to all these in great detail, of course, during the semester. But I just wanted to use this as an overview of just structural drafting, what to expect, and what can be expected of you. Hello, uh, we will have a quiz on everything that you've just seen from the beginning through the end of the PowerPoint. Uh, it'll be mainly terminology, uh, so we will have that within the next, uh, I'd say, two, two to three days. It'll be posted. Uh, you'll have two to three days to take it, uh, so just make sure that you go through the video. Take notes, just like you would in class. Uh, take note of everything, definitions, uh, relationships, all those sorts of things. Um, and then we'll have a terminology quiz, basically, uh, on that, like I said, within the next few days. Uh, so if you would do that. And I will share that link as soon as I have it posted. And I would just ask that y'all bear with me. Uh, this is the first time I've done this online, so I'm trying my best to get a course schedule down so that we can go week by week and you'll have an idea of what's coming. Uh, but for right now, you're just going to have to go week by week and we'll tackle this first. And then we will uh, move on to the next section. So thank you very much. And let me know if you have any questions.